Those are to South Africa now. Zimbabwe's energy minister, Fortune Chasi, is in the country in South Africa to negotiate for urgent power supply from ESCOM. The country has, been, uh, has seen rather frequent power interruptions recently. It has also paid ESCOM more than 140 million rand out of the 462 million rand that they owed. Mr. Chasi joins us now from Midrand uh, for this conversation. Thank you so much, Minister, for coming through and talking to me. So so first, describe for me the situation, the power situation in Zimbabwe as you left the country to come to South Africa. You've been talking as a government and uh, the power utility there, uh, uh, talking about uh, load shedding. But some would say, actually, it's closer to a collapse of the power grid. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tula, for having me. Um, I don't think we are anywhere near um what is being referred to as a power collapse um we we have got no doubt whatsoever that uh, uh, we are going to overcome our current uh, challenges in fact we see the current challenges as providing us uh, with huge opportunities for us as zimbabwe to now reorganize our power situation uh, ensure that we have got uh, significant um, um, investment and there is of course a massive uh, interest in our country uh, particularly for for, re for renewables we are inundated at the moment with uh, requests by investors from all over the world who want to come to the party and to help us to um, resolve our current challenges so how does South Africa currently, being one of your key partners in as far as securing the extra ed, um, energy needs that you have as a country, how does, how does South Africa come into that picture? What is the kind of outcome that you're looking for uh, in as far as co co cooperation with South Africa, but importantly with ESCOM uh, is concerned? Well, uh, as you know, we have uh, long-standing arrangements with our South African uh, counterparts. In fact, we have arrangements with uh, um, all the relevant uh, SADC uh, countries in the er area of power generation. Uh, we house in Zimbabwe the South Southern African uh, uh, power pool, and uh, it is traditional that uh, we cooperate, in fact, all the time regarding uh, availability of power. Now, there is a, a long-standing nexus between Zimbabwe and uh, South Africa uh, around areas of uh, um, economic and political co cooperation. So our current cooperation really is not something that is uh, novel uh, or new. But uh, the reality of the commercial arrangement is that, uh, of course, Zimbabwe imports some power from South Africa it is indebted to South Africa. And so as a result, engagement is key. We must be speaking to our South African brothers and sisters so that we come to a resolution of uh, the current situation. And I must say that uh, it is well understood that uh, they are very empathetic to our current uh, circumstances and that working together we'll be able to find uh, a solution. So just recently we saw you taking to Twitter because uh, some people were doubting uh, what you had said about uh, the payment uh, of the debt, uh, of a part of the debt that is owed to ESCOM and to prove what you were talking about. You took to Twitter and actually even showed the proof of payment. But just give us a sense then of uh, where the things stand in as far as that debt is concerned and uh, your country's ability to settle uh, what's, what's, what's outstanding and, and, and what does that mean in terms of that conversation you are having with your South African counterparts? Well, yes, we are determined as Zimbabwe to um, extinguish the indebtedness that uh, we have as a country towards uh, ESCOM. And I, I'm aware that uh, the belief and understanding uh, between the two parties is one that is uh, conciliatory, but also pragmatic in the sense that uh, we owe money, we must pay, and uh, at the same time, um, we need assistance uh, from our South African counterparts with regards to power. Our technical people have been engaged uh, for some time, and um, it is um, the finer details of their discussions that uh, will feed into uh, a possible meeting between myself and uh, 
Minister Mantashe, uh, my counterpart in South Africa. Talk to me about the situation in as far as Mozambique is concerned, uh, Minister, because that's your other uh, partner country and supplier of electricity as well. And even in that instance, you are facing massive debt as well um, in the hundreds of millions uh, of rands equivalent um, uh, in as far as that is concerned. What's, what conversations are you having on that side? Well, our major uh, creditors, in so far as uh, power is concerned at the moment, are ESCOM and uh, HCB. We are in continuing discussions uh, with them, and uh, we believe that we'll come up with a suitable structure that will unlock um, the power that uh, they may be desirous uh, to giving us. But we recognize uh, very intensely the need for us to uh, not only acknowledge uh, the indebtedness, but also to make practical steps towards the uh, payment of the debt. But we can also come up with other structures uh, which uh, the parties can agree to, which do not necessarily have to be of a monetary nature. But uh, this is a, a matter of a discussion between us um, and ESCOM as well as with HCB. What will you say to someone who says the power situation that you face in Zimbabwe uh, is intertwined uh, and quite linked to uh, the economic situation in that, I mean, for instance, the pressures on your fiscus uh, that are just compounded by the fact that you have to make these payments that are becoming due uh, in as far as the power situation is concerned, yet you've, you have a country where even the availability of other resources, such as fuel, uh, is something that does prove to be difficult uh, from time to time, um, and, and, and even the currency situation and inflation situation, almost getting back to what it was in 2008. Well, I think as a government, we have been on record to say that uh, um, we are taking very practical and significant steps towards uh, our working um, around our economy. And clearly, power is at the epicenter of everything. And uh, governance in the area of uh, power is a key determinant of uh, what will happen um, going forward. But uh, of course, uh, when there is little power, it affects uh, production and it has a lot of uh, downstream effects. So uh, I will not deny that. But uh, what I need to emphasize is that as government, we are seized uh, with the matter. And um, uh, we're looking at um, numerous options that uh, we have got uh, to work on in order to ensure that we, we write uh, the power situation in the country. We are actively looking at, at the tariff. We are looking uh, also at uh, new investments, uh, particularly in the area of renewable energies. We are also looking at managing the demand side. We need to disengage many uh, consumers from the grid. We need a lot of investment in, in the uh, area of uh, domestic consumption as well as industrial consumption. Uh, in terms of investing in, in, in solar. But uh, uh, of uh, immense importance is to say that uh, uh, we need to be paying our bills to such a very important uh, utility as ZESA. And uh, uh, the current indebtedness of the public, or rather the consumers, uh, constitutes a huge drag uh, on ZESA uh, in terms of it uh, having capacity to interact and uh, contract with other economic uh, players. So this is a, also a very important matter that we're looking at. Minister, you've mentioned the issue of investment in the area of power and the opportunities that do exist uh, in Zimbabwe in as far as getting in, in on that space. But some will say uh, part of what you've been doing as a government is basically shooting yourself on the, yourselves on the foot um, in that you know, part of what the international community would want to see is actually the reform agenda that President Mnangagwa promised uh, when he assumed office coming to reality, a country where, uh, in as far as the political situation, for example, is concerned, you don't have a situation where uh, activists are getting arrested and uh, what we saw, for instance, after the elections uh, uh, on August the 1st. What will you say to those who are saying that you continue to poison your own uh, in, uh, investment uh, climate? 
Um, I don't think so. I think as a government, we are taking uh, very deliberate uh, steps to ensure that Zimbabwe becomes a normal member of uh, the international um, family of nations. And uh, I, I think it's, it's very clear the agenda in our National Assembly and Senate regarding uh, various uh, uh, pieces of legislation that have been contentious uh, in the past and uh, being addressed in a, in a very direct way uh, and a very inclusive way. And uh, also um, the, the, the economic policies that are being put into place now to ensure that we are a normal country with its own currency and able to transact equally with other nations. Um, and I think all those are some of the reforms that we, we are working mm. on. And I, I really don't believe that uh, uh, if we do not address the power situation, we will, we will resolve anything. We've got to tackle the issues around power in Zimbabwe in a very focused and direct way as government is doing at the present moment. All right, Minister Fortune Chasid, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time uh, and some of the insights that you have shared with me about the power situation, the electricity situation uh, in Zimbabwe. That's Fortune Chasid. He's the Minister of Energy in Zimbabwe. He's in South Africa, of course, uh, discussing the situation in that country in collaboration with South Africa as well as uh, the power utility, ESCOM.